Oh, good morning, everyone, and sorry for the brief delay while we get going here, um, but I think we have the technicalities worked out. On behalf of CAR, I would like to call this meeting to order and welcome you to our virtual May general membership meeting via GoToWebinar. To begin today's meeting, please stand where you are and join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for that. A little bit different, isn't it? Now we will be moving on to the approval of the minutes from our March meeting. The minutes were sent to you via email and are also available in the handout section in your GoToWebinar toolbar. Are there any additions or corrections to the distributed minutes? If so, please submit your feedback using the chat box in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Uh, we'll wait a moment for any responses. Not seeing anything, so they stand approved as distributed and thank you. Next, I would like to recognize today's general membership meeting sponsor and CAR affiliate member, Farm Credit of the Virginias. Farm Credit of the Virginias is part of a nationwide network of cooperative lending institutions that provides financing for farm and country home loans, land purchase, home construction and improvements and much more. Please visit the CAR Facebook group and watch a quick video to learn more about Farm Credit of the Virginias and their services. As a reminder, Realtor members can find a list of our affiliate companies using the affiliates icon on the single sign-on dashboard. Before we move into today's program, I wanted to reiterate how important it is to CAR to keep members safe and healthy. While CAR remains at a level four shutdown in our business continuity plan, the CAR leadership team and staff continue to track the COVID-19 outbreak and evaluate our operational response. To support you during this challenging time, we hope you have benefited from our new resources and services, including the CAR Cares Wednesday email, the resources and updates webpage, and the online realtor store and curbside pickup service. Thank you, Tiffany. In an effort to support our local community, I am pleased to share the results of our two blood drives, which were a co-partner effort with the Blue Ridge Home Builders Association. We donated 83 pints, and this is a tremendous success. Thank you again to all members who participated and who donated. Now, as you know, the meaning of home has been redefined by this pandemic. The role that each of you play and the role that the realtor organizations will continue to play is more important than ever. I hope many of you participated in the virtual 2020 National Association of Realtors legislative and executive meetings last week. The conference sessions were created to help you and your business during these turbulent and uncertain times. While all the information was beneficial to members, I want to highlight some key takeaways, including advocacy efforts and member support resources. NAR's advocacy team has been working on our behalf more than ever. Their determination to ensure realtors are represented have resulted in various wins, such as the passing of a $2 trillion economic stimulus package which had various benefits for realtors, including unemployment eligibility for self-employed and independent contractors. In light of the challenges presented by COVID-19 and its impact on the real estate industry, NAR is taking steps to support members through these uncertain times. The Right Tools Right Now initiative, which was activated once before in 2009, makes new and existing NAR products and services available complimentary or at a significant discount. The Right Tools Right Now program includes products, resources, and services from all areas of the association, including webinars to manage your finances, education courses to expand your skills, timely market reports, digital tools, and much more. NAR CEO Bob Goldberg recently announced NAR had recently provided more than 100,000 members access to $10 million worth of services 
as part of the Right Tools Right Now program. NAR understands that access to healthcare options may be top of mind for members. Telemedicine is playing an essential role today as we navigate uncharted territory and the need for virtual healthcare. NAR is supporting members by funding two months of members telehealth as a benefit for those who do not currently have access to telemedicine with an ongoing significantly reduced rate available for members thereafter. Lastly, the Center for Realtor Financial Wellness is a resource designed exclusively to meet the specific financial planning needs of realtors. This comprehensive program includes education materials and resources for wealth building, business planning, and investing in real estate. We hope that you too can utilize NAR's discounted or free programs and services. NAR also touched on the importance of completing the 2020 census. The census provides critical data that lawmakers, business owners, teachers, and many others use to provide daily services, products, and support for you and your community. Every year, billions of dollars in federal funding go to hospitals, fire departments, schools, roads, and other resources based on census data. If you haven't already done so, please complete the 2020 census and encourage your clients to do the same. Just as NIR said, you are defenders of the home front and you are a pivotal role in restoring our economy and establishing a new normal. While we navigate this challenging time together, I remind you to continue to be a good neighbor because that's who we are. CAR is also committed to supporting members regardless of where they are in their career. In 2019, the Operations Master Group executed a comprehensive new realtor onboarding campaign, which included various email communications, in-person classes, and training videos. To encourage new members to complete the new realtor onboarding campaign, the board approved a new realtor incentive where members could receive a 50% rebate for their second year of car realtor dues. This is a $170 value. The incentive not only saved new realtors money, but the activities in which they participated supported their success in the first year of realtor membership. I'm pleased to announce we had 14 members complete the first round of the new realtor onboarding campaign. You will see their names on the screen. I would like to say congratulations to the following members for completing the campaign and receiving their $170 rebate. You show great drive and promise to be a successful realtor in our real estate market, so keep up the good work. The new realtor onboarding campaign will continue to be offered, and staff is currently working on adapting the two in-person classes to be offered online. While you may not be a new realtor to CAR, you may still benefit from watching the onboarding videos, which are hosted on CAR's YouTube channel. They are a great refresher on CAR's benefits, services, and platforms. To continue the conversation on ways to be a better and more professional realtor, I have asked Ann Burroughs, a fellow board member, to encourage members to achieve the National Association of Realtors Commitment to Excellence or C2X endorsement. Ann, I'm going to turn the meeting over to you right now. Thank you, Tom. Good morning, everyone. Um, so a little about C2EX, it empowers realtors to really evaluate, enhance, showcase their highest level of professionalism. It's not a class, it's not a designation, it's not a certification, it's, called, it's, a, it's what they call an NAR endorsement. And it's really designed to encourage participation in all levels of the realtor profession. Um, best, best of all, it's completely free and right now it can be completed 100% online. Normally you can't, but right now it can't. So to get started with your endorsement, you have to log into c2ex.realtor. You can see that on your screen right now. And take one of the 11 assessments to measure your profic proficiency, proficiency sorry, <laughs> in various aspects of professionalism, ranging anywhere from customer service to the use of technology. So then what, the, what it does is the platform generates a customized learning path and recommends tasks and resources to enhance your individual skill set. Now keep in mind though, the journey doesn't, start, doesn't end here 
because the commitment to excellence program evolves continuously as industry standards and best practices evolve. So as new content, reference, and resource materials are added to the platform, realtors who have earned their endorsement will receive a notification that will invite them to come back and keep their skills and knowledge up to date. Um, as uh, President Wolfock mentioned earlier, he has asked me to chair the C2EX project team, which is supported by the Professional Development Master Group. The project team's goal is to have 10% of the realtor membership achieve the C2EX membership uh, endorsement by the end of 2020. That means just over 100 members. So to encourage and remind members to complete the program, we are now a, including messages about it in CAR's weekly e-newsletter called News Group, and we are posting videos from endorsees on the CAR Facebook member-only group. You can see Donna Patton's message right there um, on Facebook and Debbie Cash's as well. So at this time, I would like to say congratulations to 20 CAR members for achieving the C2EX endorsement. It's a tremendous achievement, so we're 20% of the way there you will see their names on the screen. Um, we're just actually less than 20% of the way there. So um, thank you so much, all of you, for the continued commitment to excellence you've shown and representing CAR so well. You're all true professionals. I'm happy to share that each of you will also receive a C2EX pin, which I'm hoping you will wear with pride. I know I will wear mine with, proud, with pride. Now, for the rest of our Realtor members, it looks like we might have a little bit more time at home these days. So, I hope you will all start your C2EX journey as soon as this meeting is over. And remember, it is c2ex.realtornot.com. Tom, back to you. Thank you, Anne. I look forward to hearing about our increasing participation in the C2EX program throughout the year. Next, we'll move into the main presentation for today's event. I'm thrilled to introduce our Be the Resource featured speaker, Lee Brown. Many of you know Lee for her accomplishments as a highly successful realtor and a best selling author. She is an award winning educator, influencer, innovative CEO, and a must see keynote speaker. She actively educates professionals in every realm of business leadership and relationships. Lee is a do-it-all professional and is here to offer CAR members practical skills and ideas to keep you relevant in today's economy. We will hold a question and answer session following Lee's presentation, which will be facilitated by Rachel Foster. To submit your questions for Lee to address at the end of her presentation, please use the chat box in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. Lee, I hand the meeting over to you. Thank you, Tom, and good morning, Charlottesville. I'm so glad to be with y'all today, and I hope that everybody's enjoying the weather we've had. I know around here, we're like all up about our rain, got five and a half inches yesterday, so I was praying my garden wouldn't go wash out because seriously, y'all, this is like the best my squash has ever looked, and so have my tomatoes. And you can feel me, you know, as a Southern person, that's just how we roll, we look after our gardens. But Tom, an extra high five and thank you for serving in what is the weirdest leadership year I think any realtor could ever have anticipated. And if you are on this webinar today and you don't understand volunteer leadership, I got to tell y'all, your volunteer leaders aren't paid. This is a big secret. And they usually come into their role with piles of energy and ideas and ways to make the association better and make your lives better as members. And then when coronavirus came, it hit like that and disrupted a lot of plans in addition to just you know throwing the whole world into a wild ruckus so give an extra thank you to your volunteer leaders and give an extra thank you to your staff because your staff worked their batukases off to get this plan together so that y'all could have a meeting that would be helpful memorable and useful as well so thank you staff high five to you as well if we've never met i'm a realtor myself i'm 20 years in the business so I'm super irritated by the fact that I had all these client events and things planned for this year and give backs to celebrate 20 years in the business. And yeah, that didn't happen. So we're punting every day right now, just as you are to manage. I'm not gonna call it the new normal though, because I kind of hate that phrase. And I refuse to think that the world we're in right now is any kind of normal. The way I'm looking at right now is that we're in the great unknown. 
because none of us know what it's going to look like on the other side of the pandemic. The data change every stinking day. And so your clients, and frankly, some of you, you're landing somewhere on this scale. And the scale is somewhere from walking dead, bodies in the streets, to hoax, there is no virus. And there don't seem to be a lot of opportunities to fall into the gray area because everybody's wound up like this. And in an era where we're wound up and fearful, panicked, unreasonable, angry, um, losing our grace and our patience, it's tricky, right? And so that's why we have to call it the great unknown because who knows how things are gonna sort out. And I'll tell you that as a 20 year realtor, my perspective is a little driven by the fact that this is my third big market disruption. My first one was of course 9-11. And so I was a buyer's agent at that time I had buyers in my car on 9-11 from New York and we're riding around like, holy, I just, uh, it was surreal. They of course chose not to move to North Carolina. They decided to stay in New York because that was more pertinent to them at that time. But what was crazy was that on 9-10, life was different than it was on 9-11. And what we've seen about the changes since then are primarily around travel. You might be young enough to not know what travel was like before TSA. Tom and I are old enough to know. We used to could walk in an airport and chill out and go say hey to somebody. Can't really do that now without getting people yelling at you and tackling you down to the ground. In fact, our favorite thing to do in high school, we would go down to the airport in Charlotte and we would just walk in and go to a gate and act all surprised to see somebody and act like we were welcoming them home. We didn't know them just to mess with people, but can't do that now. Although we should be able to mess with people. They need a sense of humor. But anyway, my second big market disruption was the Great Recession. And many of you lived through that as well. And if you were a realtor during the Great Recession, this time frame has given you a lot of heartburn unrest because it feels like we're in another big, ugly spot. But I want to remind you of something. That was a structural recession. It was caused by bad money planning, by the mortgage tranches. If you don't understand what caused the Great Recession, you don't have to admit it. Just go watch the movie, The Big Short. It's overly dramatized, but it's probably the best explanation of how we wound up in bad money markets and with a wildly devastating recession. Or you can read the book, but <laughs> you're realtors. So I'll just remind you that that was a different scenario than we're in now. 9-11 was situational. The Great Recession was structural. And the one we're in right now, we're just not sure. And the probably the good thing for all of us is that our clients are probably figuring out finally that there is no national real estate market because they know very clearly that there are markets that are open and operational and there are markets that are not. So we're seeing things differently. I set you up with all that to help you understand where we're gonna come from in our conversation today, which is my hashtag be the resource. And I of course talk in hashtags because we're in a social media world. And even though I am middle-aged, I'm hip enough on hashtags, thank you. And before we dig into this, I just wanna remind you, if you're a younger realtor, so you've been in the business since 2014, if this is your first disrupted market, please get a mentor, please. You need to talk to some one of us that has been through times like this, who can say to you, I know it sucks, it's crazy, you're feast or famine, and right now some of you are feast and some of you are famine because of a lot of different reasons, and we'll talk about that. But that older, calmer perspective can help you move forward, and that's critical. Hopefully that person is your broker. If that person's not your broker, look at this attendee list. In this association, I know a lot of members of this association. I've had the honor of working with y'all over the years. You got some good people here. They'll help you. They're not gonna laugh at you if you're panicked. They're not gonna belittle you. They're gonna say to you, I know, I am one too. Because y'all, I don't think the regular world understands what realtors go through. Our jobs are wildly unpredictable. In the normal market, they're unpredictable because in February, if I'd asked y'all what your biggest problem was, you would have said what? Lack of inventory. What would you have said in 2019? Lack of inventory. What would you have said in 12? Is anybody ever going to buy a house ever again? Is this ever going to end? There's always something happening in the marketplace that causes you to have a little bit of unrest. 
And that's usually driven by market conditions. Well, this unrest has been driven by something different. Frankly, if we're very honest with ourselves, a lot of what's happening right now is driven by fear. Now, founded or unfounded is not the question. A lot of us have been driven by fear. So let's talk about what that can do to your business and how you move past it. I don't think many of y'all want this job. You're thinking, I don't, I don't want to be in front of a bank of microphones. There's a half a dozen of y'all that are, and you should probably be applying for leadership roles in the association, I'm just saying. But when you think about the role of the realtor in today's era of the pandemic, you have been asked a lot of questions. And sometimes it's on the spot. You snuck over to the grocery store and your past client saw you and made a beeline and said, Zoop. we were thinking about selling. Should we be selling or should we wait? When should we wait? When are things going to be normal? We were thinking about buying. Can we buy right now? Can we look at houses? Is it safe? Are people like sanitizing? What can I do to look at a house? Do we be refinancing? We heard interest rates are at zero. That's always my favorite conversation. Do y'all love that too? Yeah, the, the price of oil went to zero and people are like, why is it gas free? Because economics and math. So anyway, you're going to be receiving questions. And I'll tell you that part of the reason people come to you is because they have an expectation of how you deliver things. Think about how you deliver information on a listing appointment or buyer consultation. You're generally trying to get them into a common ground where you can figure out how to move forward, whether it's moving forward today or in a year or three years, whatever their plan is. But you have to pull them down from their emotional highs we have to buy a house. Oh my God, we got a new job. Oh my God, we're pregnant. We have to buy a house today. Oh my God, we're going to be out. We're going to be homeless. You're like, all right, here's our plan. Here's our time frame. Oh my God, we got to sell the house. We're going to relocate. We found the house. The new construction said our house is going to be ready in 30 days. Oh my God, we got to sell. We got to sell. That's what you already do, friends. So let's think about what that means in pandemic time and how it becomes something that makes your business look different on the other side of the great unknown, different in a good way. Right now, the media is feeding a lot of fear and panic into the marketplace. And I don't care which side you're on, whether you're on the walking dead end of the spectrum or the hoax end of the spectrum, doesn't matter. Almost every article out there is designed to cause your blood pressure to go up. It's designed to give you a high palpitation level in your heart and cause fear. Because why? When you click on their little news articles, they make money. Would y'all please just remember that all that fear-based crap is designed to make money off of your habits mm -hmm, and make you come back and read more articles where you'll stay fearful? Mm -hmm. So if you're a very wise individual, at this point, you're already on a diet. And I don't mean the Quarren 15 diet because you've been in your kitchen way too much. It's like the break room that never closes and always has food in it. So the diet you need to be on is a media diet. And I say this as somebody who is a news and politics junkie. I enjoy the news and I enjoy reading perspective, but I had to diet because I can't consume that stuff all day. Y'all, if you're reading that stuff all day, you won't move forward. And then it's hard for you to give that amazing counsel that you're so well positioned to give to keep other people calm and focused on whatever the best outcome is for them. So I'll tell you right now, I do my devotion first thing and then I do the news. I check the headlines, see if there's something I need to know and cut it off. If my friends start posting articles on the Facebooks, I know it's time to turn off the socials too because anytime sharing happens, I have to ask myself where the sharer came from and what their source is. I also do not read the news at night anymore because that just was keeping me from sleeping. So I beg of you to do the same thing. For you to be the most effective realtor giving the best counsel that you can possibly give wherever you are on the spectrum, you need that calm and focus. So where do we get it? Well, we get it from good information. If you've not been hanging out on your car page with coronavirus information, this is where you should go, not the mainstream media. I'm so stinking proud of the realtors, y'all. I don't know if you've noticed, but if you visit any realtor association website, I don't care how small or large, Go to VAR as well, go to NAR. All of the realtor resources for coronavirus, they're not wildly opinionated. No, it's all facts. Boom, boom, boom. FAQ, here's what to know. Here's the CDC guidelines. Here's our rules for showings. Here's this, here's that. Here's SBA, here's PPP, here's unemployment for you. It is just the facts, ma'am. And I'm so glad that in this time, of wild uncertainty and panic, 
that FANUC, I guess that's true, FANUC and peer. So fear and panic make FANUC. I just made a new word. So in this time of FANUC, it's the realtors who have said, y'all just stop, just stop. This page has been updated by your staff every time there's information you need. This is your resource, friends, and it will help you stay grounded if you're reading information that is bullet pointed and is just what you need to know. And, and spoiler alert, your realtor websites are generally a good place to get information. I'm just saying, but especially right now, and there's your actual URL right down there. Go to car.com slash coronavirus dash resources dash updates. And yes, it's a lot of letters, but bookmark it. And then just go there and say, I, I don't like what I read in the news today. So come here. Your staff's got you. And then before you start sharing things, I want you to be my statue here. There's two things I want you to notice about my statue friend, besides the fact that he's got a Carolina blue sky. Oops. He's thinking first. Oh, isn't that nice? Shouldn't we think first before we start spouting off? Maybe that would help us a lot. And maybe if we stopped and thought before we shared information, you would think about how it impacts your audience and what's necessary and what's not. Because if you're going to be known as the resource and to be that trusted, guided professional that they expect you to be, they don't want you to be wildly unhinged. That doesn't help. They want you to have thought about it. And then when you're thinking about sharing something, the other thing he's doing, he's quiet. You know what that means? He's not making comments and wild threads, typing in all caps. Sometimes if you find yourself reacting to the point where you're typing like this, you just need to hit backspace about 25 times and say, I, I just, I feel better for typing it. I'm going to let it go because one wildly unhinged comment is probably not going to change anybody's mind. Just a you know little observation for you there. But do consider that there are things we can share that are helpful. We can share information from the realtors about, hey, what's happening in the market and what people should expect and how can they move themselves forward. And let's talk about some good ways to do that. The good ways to do that actually involve you having a plan for your business. And don't, I'm going to see how many attendees I have, how many y'all fixing to jump off since I'm about to tell you how to fix your business. Because as realtors, we get super duper focused on our best skill, which is the relationship building and the conversation. And our not so best skill, if you're honest, right, is the organization and detail part. Now, when I'm interviewing realtors at my brokerage, I don't even ask them if they're organized because that's a fool's errand. I just want to know how many contacts they have. Have they taken any sales classes? Can you convert? Can you converse? Are you ethical and honest and good? If they're organized, frankly, I'm a little suspicious of them because most realtors are a hot mess and you know this. And so when you are a hot mess, it sometimes comes from this place that we found ourselves in during coronavirus. This is my home family calendar. So this lives on my refrigerator, which I could show y'all because I'm here in my dining room, obviously. It's a big old magnet. Normally it's got Expo marker on it. My travel and my work in pink, Steve's in blue and his old man softball and haircuts and Cora's in green with her choir and piano and other 15 year old things. And Timmy's in orange with baseball and bassoon. And it's like a wild colored picture. And when March hit and we all got sent home, we just erased the whole thing because everything got canceled. And then April happened and I was like, well, shit, I just, I'll just call it April. It's the same calendar. And when your life feels really out of order, it's easy to lose your forward momentum, to feel like a lump. And even if there's things you need to do, a lot of realtors have lost their motivation to do it. You're getting it done, but it doesn't feel right because this is not your normal world. Friends, when we talk about small businesses, I will tell you that when we talk about realtors, there is a reality that's not being addressed. And I want you to understand how critical this is. We are peopley people. We're used to Rotary and BNI and lunch groups and book clubs and dinner groups and brewery friends. And we're always with people. The coronavirus time has changed how we interact physically with other humans. And I'm going to tell you, I know it's affecting you. There's so much research that says you need 10 hugs a day for optimal health. You're not getting 10 hugs a day right now unless you've got little kids, in which case, lucky you. But the rest of you, I know this is why you're having a hard time. So I'm going to tell you that you're not alone and it's okay. 
and it's going to be hard for a little while longer. So just let me remind you realtors here, this is the most important time for you to reach out to other realtors, not for recruiting, but just to check on them and say, hey, now maybe they're busy and they're working seven days a week. They're still not able to interact like they're used to. So just check on each other. I love our profession. I love the people in our profession. And when we all have this kind of a mush going on in our lives, we can support each other in a way that external people just can't. But what I'll tell you is that when, you're, when your life gets mushy, even if you've got some business stuff going on, you've probably got kids in your house and your spouse is now your coworker, and frankly, you're tired of your house and you're just, you're, ugh. here's how we respond to that in 2020. We get on our phones and we go to the Facebooks and the LinkedIn's and the Twitters and the Instagrams and we start the scrolling, 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 scrolling. Oh, see if anybody knew that was rawhide. See, that's how you'll know how old you are. But when you're scrolling, you're also continuing to lose ground because many of you just don't have a plan. Probably the number one question I'm ever asked about social media is where do you come up with your ideas? What are you doing? Shazam, here you go, friends, ideas. What? Yeah. You download it. There's your link, leebrown.com slash resources. Understand, this is not Lee Brown telling you what you have to do. This is not a must follow this for optimal real estate success, or you'll get 100 new listings tomorrow if you follow this. Okay, that's, I'm not going to make any of those bullshit promises to y'all. But what I'll tell you is that I want you to tap into your own creativity. Think about the market that you serve, the people that you serve, and the kind of realtor that you are. And we've got to build out a better picture of who we are so that people will understand. I will tell you that one of the reasons I believe we've had challenges with our elected officials understanding that we're essential is because first of all, most of our elected officials have not done real estate themselves in many decades because they're almost all old as dirt and they haven't bought or sold houses. A lot of them have money because they're lawyers and they're not used to what you and I deal with, which is the first time buyer who's doing FHA or the move up buyer who needs to get the equity out of this house and put it into this house because they've outgrown it. The relocation buyer who's got a trailing spouse, the elderly people who need to downsize because they just can't keep up with the house anymore. Our elected officials haven't been in those shoes. And so they don't know what we do. And frankly, friends, that's our fault. I'm just gonna tell you that's our fault because they watch HGTV and they think that people do like they do on House Hunters and look at three houses in 30 minutes and then they carefully think over a cafe and then they buy one. Ta-da, it's so easy. Or they watch Million Dollar Listing and they have an open house and 50, 11 people come through and it's shoulder to shoulder and they're like, oh my gosh, you guys do need to social distance all those people in open houses. It's really like that. And then the agent makes $40,000 million because they're all rich in the Bay Area and they don't know that a real open house is you got two couples through and you're like, yeah. And one went upstairs and one went downstairs. And so they were already social distancing, but you're running around chasing them to make sure they're not stealing prescription drugs because that's what we do in open houses. And the reason that we know that's what opens look like, but they think that they look different is because of what they see in the media and then what you post on social media, friends. When y'all are posting opens, you're often like, I'm having an open house this afternoon from 12 to 2, and you're welcome to come by, and oh, we had a successful open house, and you're pretty dreadful about it, to be honest, right? We don't often tell the truth. We don't say things like, look, if you're going to have an open house, put the prescription drugs away, I'm just saying. We don't tell people that at this open house, there will be two realtors for safety, so y'all just be cool when you get here and don't try to be sneaky. We haven't told people about our jobs. We haven't given them the inside picture of all the things that we do that make us successful and that make us indispensable to people. We do more than dress up and drive around. And so we need to help get that point across. And so with the social content list, I want you to think outside of what you've always been posting. Now, first of all, I have to do my mama hen with the long bony finger of shame about what not to do. Now, first of all, y'all just heard me tell you to quit posting what everybody else posts. And I probably should write on here, if y'all post that stupid Staples easy button one more time, I'm gonna drive up to Charlottesville and find you because our job is not easy. And you know this, the one time you have an easy transaction, you're like, something's, 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 something's gonna go wrong. There's, the ex-wife's gonna appear. 
there's going to be fungal growth and I just that the lender's going to vanish and something's going to happen because every transaction has some kind of hiccup. But friends, that's why they hire us. They hire us to be professional problem solvers. If you want to know why you're paid, what you're paid and how important you are, would you just remember those three words? What's a realtor? A professional problem solver. What problems do you solve? It depends on the house and the buyer and the seller and the lender and the other agent and the attorney and the title company and the surveyor and should I go on? Because it's very intricate what we do. I, I do think our elected officials would have understood us differently had we explained it better, but hopefully we'll move into that space as we come out of the great unknown here. But when I tell you about staying away from the static virtual tours, I'm talking about the ones that realtors have used for a blue moon of, I have 20 photos of this house. I'm going to insert them into an app and it's going to stitch them together and then somebody can hit play and ta-da, we have a virtual tour. No, that's a slideshow. And if you're young, you don't know what the sound of is. But a lot of the members over here do. Y'all remember the Kodak carousel and you got trotted into the living room after Thanksgiving lunch and your aunt and uncle wanted to show their trip to the Grand Canyon and you had to sit on the couch and watch it because your mama said, that's my sister, sit down. I mean, I enjoyed some of the slideshows, but most of them, no, because it's boring, it's not dynamic. So why don't you replace the idea of a static tour with a dynamic tour? And what I'm talking about here, as I tell you how to fix your what not to do, is if you can see my camera, you'll see I've got my phone up, and now you know I'm cheap because I have the iPhone 11, but I did not get the Pro because I couldn't stomach an extra thousand dollars because I'm, I'm cheap. So if you're going to do a showing of a house or a tour of a house, you can do it like this from your computer if you are a stay home person or from the house if you're able to go to a house. Your face isn't in this, it's your voice. You're the VOG is what we call it in speaking world, the voice of God. And so I'm standing here talking, I'm going to walk the buyer through the house like they're in my hip pocket. If I'm in the house, obviously it's easy, I'm going to walk through and act like I'm showing it. And you know why that works? Because y'all are fun showing houses. You are insightful, you are smart, you are helpful. And the public needs to know that that's what showings look like. Showings aren't just the realtor standing at the door saying, please make yourself at home. No, you're walking through, you're like, hey, did y'all know this kitchen has soft closed drawers? Yeah, your kids won't slam the door anymore. Oh, look at this little cool thing over here. They had a shaker trim. Oh, check this out. And then you're like, hmm, I see a stain on the ceiling. Let me make a note. Let's ask the other agent what the scoop is there. Because that's how you show houses. You're pointing out pros and cons and you're delightful. But then on social media, you don't look delightful. You look boring. And so if you're taking somebody through the house like this, you're like, well, Lee, how do I do that from home if I'm not ready to go show? Easy. Pull up the slide deck of your photos for a house that you know. And then cut your video on and page through the photos and say, now here's the living room. And what you can't see is that that fireplace is wood burning and gas logs. So you can go whichever way you want to go. It's pretty cool. Now look at this. What you can't see in this kitchen is that there's under cabinet lighting because silly me, we forgot to cut it on for the pictures. And that's where you can really be telling somebody as a realtor, I want you to notice things. It's so powerful, y'all, and it's not perfect, right? You're not thinking about some expensive videographer with the soaring angles and the beautiful lighting. I mean, you, you're the power in your business. I think some of you just forget it or you're afraid to let the public know how, how great you are. I don't know why y'all have become your worst critics, but just stop it. And I'll also remind you that as you're thinking about your social content, now you're already thinking in a more dynamic way. Remember that Talking about real estate -y kind of things like historically low interest rates doesn't really encourage anybody to talk to you. They're like, oh God, here she goes again. So it's not about you knowing things. It's about how the things you know can impact the people that you know. We'll talk about that in a second. And I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to shake the long bony finger of shame again here. If realtors don't stop bitching about other realtors, I'm going to lose my mind. I have been so ashamed of our people, y'all, in the last 60 days. How many realtors are shaming other realtors because they're in different places on this spectrum? They're saying ugly things about realtors that are working when we have a lot of single mom realtors that if they don't work, their kids don't eat. And I think they're doing it safely, the ones I know. And you have some that aren't ready to go out and they've been shamed for 
believing fake news and everybody's got different things. Maybe they have parents with asthma. You don't know all the things. So quit being so ugly. We shouldn't be doing that ever, but especially right now when everybody's in a weird spot. I'm just going to tell you that we're in this together. And I hate that phrase, but I mean, we realtors. And as a speaker, and I know that Sasha Farmer is here and you know, she's a speaker and trainer too, and she'll back me up on this. When you have the opportunity to talk to people about real estate, they no longer think of you as a realtor. They think of you as the realtors. And it's not just those of us that have microphones. It's also you at the grocery store. People think that whatever you say is what all realtors do and say. And so if we want people to believe that realtors are ethical, kind, compassionate, competent, knowledgeable, smart professionals, then we're going to act that way towards one another. It's got to stop. And you also, I'll just tell you, in normal times, we haven't seen a lot of it right now, but there's been a lot of ugliness online about some of your suspects. When I see a realtor get online and say, I can't believe I got stood up again. I made this appointment and I changed my schedule for them and they didn't even show up. Yeah, you're telling the rest of your public who you are. So I, I, I know this might be a secret. So lean in close, friends. When you put something on the internet, it's there forever. Mm -hmm. And when you type in all caps, that's hollering. And if you type something and post it and then delete it, there's this really cool thing called a screenshot. So you can't even escape it. So just think, be my little statue, right? But be kind. I just don't understand why I have to even say this. And I'm sure that y'all are the good kids because you're here on the webinar. So if you see one of your fellow members acting the fool online, I don't want you to respond in the comments. I want you to pick up your telephone and call them and say, hey, friend, it's, it's me over here, Lee Brown at One Community Real Estate. Hey, I saw your comment online. I just want to check on you. You I, I mean, you sounded kind of aggravated. Need to vent? Go on and vent to me for a second. I got you, friend, because your, your sphere might see that, and I don't want them to think poorly of you. Come on, y'all. We could help each other be better, and then people think differently of realtors. So here's how we're going to take that message and put it into content. I've got 10 buckets for you here. I want you to look at the calendar again, knowing we have 10 buckets of ideas. And every week you have seven days. Da, da, da. Saturday is probably your showing day or your gardening day or whatever your Saturday is. Sunday for me is worship and family. For you, that might be a work day. But of the seven days in the week, I want you to mark out two days for whatever your rest looks like and whatever you know is a client day. The other five. We're going to put them in buckets, okay? So in week one here, let's just say it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's your first five buckets. Second week we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So we're going to have two weeks worth of scheduled content out of these 10 buckets, okay? And what I want you to think about here is how this is going to change what the public thinks of you as their realtor. The first bucket is your real estate bucket. But I want you to think in terms of what's not icky. And by icky, I mean the things that we do that make people think we're used car salesmen. And y'all hate that comparison. So then quit saying things like the greatest compliment you can pay me is a referral to your friends and family or crap like houses are flying off the shelves and we have record low inventory. That's not making anybody come and talk to you. So as you're thinking about these 10 categories, your rule of thumb is this. If I were sitting down to have a cocktail with a friend, would I say this over a cocktail? And the rule is one cocktail, because if it's three cocktails, y'all will say anything. So this is the one cocktail with a friend. That's going to tell you that what you're putting into the world is conversational. Social media was designed to be social, create conversation, get people to talk to you and to identify with you so that they will know you. And when they know you, they're more likely to trust you. And what realtor do they use? Their local trusted professional. You build that through a lot of different avenues, but it's all about what's the response gonna come from. And I'll tell you, I can tell when y'all have taken some really crappy training classes because it'll say, you'll, I'll see all the posts on Facebook. Oh, how old were you when you bought your first house? Okay, so then people all respond and it's not a conversation or the one that was circulating two days ago of when you last bought a house, what caused you to choose your realtor? You wouldn't sit down over cocktails and say that. 
I hope. I mean, if you did, I'm going to get up and leave and find somebody more fun. So how do you talk about real estate in a way that's not icky? Well, for me, in this era, I have been adapting some of my existing content and I have a series going on Instagram called Realtor Tips and I try to give little insights, minute, minute and a half, things on a house like what do you do with an above ground pool? What's hardboard siding? What's hardy plank siding? What's the sewer clean out in the yard? Things that y'all say on showings to help people understand. Little tiny snippets because that helps the public understand what kind of realtor you are and also why they want a realtor and they don't wanna go through an app, right? Well, I've adapted that during this time to give people ideas for things they can do with their home while they're on stay at home orders. Because again, your public, not just us realtors on a spectrum of walking dead to hoax, your clients are also on that same spectrum. So as you're putting information out there, just remember you're speaking to a lot of different audiences and show them a little grace and patience because you don't know what they're consuming right now. Well, when I make these little tips, one that I made that was, and by the way, anything I do, take it, steal it, make your own version. I don't care. It doesn't hurt my feelings if it inspires you. I, it's fine. A real estate is a profession of abundance. I will tell you that right now. But anyway, I make these little videos and I always use video. Why? Because people watch it. And if you write a four paragraph, lovely essay, mm, they're not reading it, okay? You know this, right? People watch video and they don't even listen to it. That's why I put subtitles on all my videos. And by the way, the program that I use for that is also on my resource page. So you can have all this, the stuff you need. Anyway, I make these little tidbits. And then this is a secret just for Charlottesville. I send that to my suspects first. So all of my seller suspects get my little tip 24 hours before I post it to the public. Now, why do I do that? Because y'all, we're in a society where you can look how consumer behavior works. People like to feel special and feel personalized. And so when I send them a VIP insight, I know they're following me online. They see it the next day and they know they got it first. That's a really important message to give to people that you are giving them first dibs and that makes you different. Well, the tip that got me a lot of response back, I was making a little video about how while you're at home and you've got these children who need something to do with their time, go clean out that place between the window and the screen where you have all the dead ladybugs and cobwebs and dead leaves. And it's just kind of gross and icky and nobody ever cleans it because even when y'all pressure wash your house, the screens are still on. And so it just makes the dead roly polies, dead spiders and dead leaves wet. And so People don't think about that. And so I said, clean it up so that whenever you're ready to sell your house, whenever that day comes that you're ready, this will be done. So you can help people move themselves forward in a way that showcases that you are the kind of professional who understands where they are and wants to help in whatever space they're in. Well, I got a lot of response back on that, which primarily consisted of, Lee, do we really have to do that? Because I'm in here packing and decluttering and I don't, I don't wanna. And I say, well, yes, I want you to do it. And here's why. You remember going on the first date? And they say, yes. And I say, well, you had a great outfit for that first date, didn't you? And they say, yes. And I say, you also showered before you put the outfit on, right? Well, yeah. So if you don't do all the small things like cleaning those out, like changing the filters on your furnace system, it's kind of like putting on your new outfit without showering somebody's gonna be super interested and they're gonna to wanna to see everything and this could impact their decision. And I want you to get the best offer possible and have that buyer have no arguments with us about your house. Okay, I get it. And by the way, some of y'all are thinking, Lee, that relationship analogy is tacky. Okay, fine. I'm right though, because relationship and real estate, y'all, the overlays are amazing but I also attract an older clientele and old people crack up over this stuff. It's young people who get offended. It's kind of hilarious. But anyway, think about what you can do to help people. Maybe you want to tell them what to look for on new construction. What do you do on resale homes? How do you prep your house? How do you just live in it? What can avoid deferred maintenance? And one of the tips I'll give you here, I interviewed my home inspector on Zoom and in your Zoom, you all have a free Zoom account by now, I'm pretty confident. In your settings, you can send your Zoom to Facebook Live. Well, I had my inspector, Patrick, come in and I was asking him questions, you know, what's different about inspections during coronavirus and how to buy or see a house and blah, blah, blah. And what got people responding was when I asked him, I said, so listen, 
when you inspect the house for one of our buyers, what's the one thing you wish they would do after they buy the house so that we don't have to have them fix it in five years when we come back to sell it? So you catch that, it's a subtle message that says, I plan to sell it again for you one day. And he was hilarious, he's like, caulk it, just caulk it. If you see a, a gap, caulk it. If you've got a band seal to start in the rock, caulk it. And he just went off on caulk, it was hilarious. And we got a ton of response back. And why? Because it wasn't Lee Brown being the expert, it was my home inspector being the expert, giving his viewpoint. Sometimes y'all, to be an, a non-icky realtor, get into that space of humility that says you actually don't know everything, but you're surrounded by people with answers. Because that's one of the top things that your buyers and sellers want from you as a realtor is your access to great vendors and great contacts. Now you notice that the 10 categories, only one's real estate. See, y'all got to go on a diet. I think realtors have Tourette's syndrome when it comes to Facebook and Instagram and Twitter because you're real estate, real estate, real estate, real estate, just sold, just sold, just sold. And by the way, y'all need to stop with these posts that say, sold in five minutes under a day. Do you know what you're doing to yourself? If you post how fast you sold something, you're telling the public that it was easy. And it wasn't easy because I know you. You worked with that seller for 12 solid months helping them declutter and stop hoarding and paint this and do this carpet and do this and do this and do this. You helped them get to the point where it could sell in the day. So you guys worked together as a team. But you know what else we're accidentally telling our clientele when we say we sold it in a day? Who's taking all the credit for that sale? Realtor is. Who did all the work? The seller did. Y'all, once in a while, we should tell our sellers, hey, high five for getting all the work done. And I know it was a year of work to get this house ready, but daggone, we got it sold quickly because of all the work you did. Good job. Messaging, optics, it all adds up to how people perceive you as a reasonable problem-solving resource. Now, number two, I will say y'all been killing it on community info. The people that I know in Charlottesville, I have watched y'all highlighting local restaurants, talking about what's changing in the area, just information, Go, good job. Realtors have killed it on that during coronavirus time. And you wanna think about how this should be a long-term part of your business plan to encourage and support your community outside of your own self. Number three is just think about things that we maybe should do for our clients anyway that we forget about because we don't think about it. Every house might not be subject to hurricane season or tornadoes or, wildfires, but every house could burn down because somebody put a Chick-fil-A sandwich in the microwave and that's got a full line bag. So does your client base know that there's a resource? And it's free. It's at ready.gov. And when you go there, you can put together a family plan for how do we get out if the house is on fire? Where do we meet up to make sure we're playing duck, duck, goose and we have everybody? People need this because in our society, everybody thinks they can text everybody else and find them. But what if the person who set the kitchen on fire left their cell phone there and it burnt up and now you can't find them? This is a safety thing. And it's the way to be known as a realtor that you really do care. And you can put your little real estate message in there and say, whenever y'all buy another house, don't worry, we'll set up another plan. Just think about being more holistic, I guess, is the way to say it. And number four, I'm just going to point out when it comes to politics, a couple of best practices. Now, full disclosure, I've run for office twice. I've lost twice. So also full disclosure. So people know where I am affiliated politically because I had to come out of the political closet to be a filed candidate. But I want you to know when it comes to politics, you don't have to be a scary, partisan, mean, nasty person. You don't talk about presidential politics. That's not where I'm going here. I'm pretty sure everybody you know has already decided what camp they're in. What I want you to think about is the absolute impact that our mayors, town councils, and county commissions and school boards have on real estate. It's ridiculously important. And that's actually where voters have the least education. So if you have eight candidates on the ballot for county commission, your clients are going to the polls going, well, that name looks good. I always vote for number four. Let me pick her. And he sounds familiar. I'll pick him. And they're just picking stuff out of thin air. Well, if you want to do this, think about how you can be a resource. And maybe you post on your socials that you're going to call all the candidates for county commission because you want to know what they think about zoning issues in your area. And hey, do y'all have any other questions you want me to ask them? And I'll come back and give a report. Well, how cool is that? You're going to be the one doing the work that nobody wants to do, calling candidates 
you had 10 candidates and four called you back and six did not, well, that's part of your post. And then you could say, if you want to know names, private message me. I try to keep the names off of social because I don't want to be ugly. I will tell you, ask somebody who's run for office, that's the meanest, ugliest thing on the planet to go through. And I respect anybody who's willing to put their name in the hat. Even if they're snakes, thieves, and liars, they were willing to put themselves out there. So you won't find me saying ugly things about candidates online, and I'm not, not going to do that. But I will provide insights to the people who expect me to know a little more than the average bear. And as a realtor, you already know more than the average bear. You know how much it impacts a neighborhood when you have regulatory overburden, when you have new taxes, when you have zoning issues, when school zones change. So remember that you know how this impacts and you actually have a responsibility to educate people on that. So embrace that job. It's a really great place to be in. And of course, you've got a bunch of other categories on there to help you think through things that you can talk about in a way that will mean you've just created a system. Ta -da! So now you're not the most disorganized realtor on the planet. You have a system for your socials. And I want you to look at it. Do it for a month. Look at your plan between now and June the 21st. And if you can design four weeks of structured ideas for content, you will keep doing it because it takes 21 days to create a new habit. And frankly, I think you'll have more fun on social media if you're thinking in terms of, would I talk about this over cocktails? And I now have a bucket in which to think. I'll give you a, an insight on that. I will tell you that if I post a picture of a house, the front of the house, I don't get much traffic on it. But if I post a little inside skinny on something like how cool this piece is, or, well, there was a house I listed this week. You can't see the front of it because of all the trees. And so I had a devil of a time getting photos. And that was my little Instagram story. Well, people responded to that because they're like, well, I'd rather have the trees and the house. I'm like, I know, because it creates conversation. The Actually, the video that had the big conversation was last Saturday. I was out running with my friends and I post a lot of fitness posts because I'm a runner. And that's a community in which I spend a lot of time. But we were running 15 miles. And on mile 15, there's this six foot long black snake hanging out across the greenway. And a bunch of runners and walkers were standing there staring at him because they weren't going anywhere until he was gone. And I'm like, oh, I want to save him because blacks are good. And so I went down to pick him up. And of course, my girlfriend who I was running with was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, what are you doing? And so she makes a little video and talking to him the whole time. And when I tried to pick him up, he got to moving off the greenway and was out of the way. And so, of course, I posted it about how, you know, don't you all stop and talk to the snakes. And it generated a ton of conversation, which was primarily, oh, hell no, or oh, sweet snake, which is definitely two camps. But it gets people talking. All right. So now that we've got people talking, let's talk about your business. And the fact that many of you are so smart. You're so good at the mechanics of real estate. There's a reason you're successful. There's a reason you sell as many houses as you do. And where do you keep all that amazing knowledge? Keep it right here in your head. If I emptied your head out, I would find so much. But you're realtors and you're already arguing with me across the computer. You're saying, well, Lee Brown, by the time I write down what I know, I could have done it myself. And I know you could have. I get it. I feel you on that. However, I'm going to remind you of something that you need to know here. You're going to die one day. I know that's shocking because we kind of act like right now nobody dies except for this one moment in time, but you're going to die too. And it's probably not coronavirus. It's probably a heart attack, brain aneurysm, or it could be a beer truck coming down the mountain that takes you out and you're gone. And because you're realtors, you'll still be working because we work all the time, which means you'll have a buyer or a seller in process. And then what's going to really shock you is that that listing you have, the seller is not going to say, oh, Tom's gone. I can no longer sell my house. I must just stay put. Uh, no, he's going to say, oh, snap, Google. Oh, man, that's terrible. He got hit by a beer truck. Oh, man, he was a nice guy. And then he's like, well, what happens to my listing? And he's looking for who to call. And he calls somebody and he gets Ann. And Ann says, yes, we're going to miss Tom. Moment of silence. And then Ann says, all right, so talk to me a little bit right here. Um, when's your last showing? Well, if Tom kept everything in his head, the seller's like, I, I don't know. If you had any offers? I don't know. What'd y'all come up with this price? I don't know. And Ann goes, Jesus, take the wheel because Tom didn't leave me nothing to help this guy when it lives here. 
However, the flip side of that is when you become the organized person. It's when you become the person that says, okay, this is how I roll. I don't know if y'all can see my camera or not, but what I'm showing, if you can't see it, is my yellow sheet here for incoming sellers. And this gets filled out whenever somebody says, I need to sell my house. My next question, those of y'all that have heard me teach, you already know what I'm about to say. I next ask them, may I ask you a few questions? And they say, yes. And now I can ask them anything. Well, this is what I ask them. I fill out this sheet and this lives in their book where I have a lot of checklists. And so I go to my seller appointment and I show them all the checklists. And they're like, what's that? And I'm like, it's all the things we're gonna do at some point to get this house sold. But just understand these checklists are living. We're forever finding a new something we gotta do and I will adapt it and roll with it. And we're gonna take care of you as best we can because this is very uncertain. They're kind of shocked because most realtors just walk in with a pretty slick and say, I'm the best realtor and here's six comps and yay. And I walk in with checklist after checklist. And they're like, dang. And I'll, by the way, my buyer ones look like this. I got my bag of folders below me. My buyer ones are blue. And if you're curious, my system for organization, I use these little clear two-sided folder holders so I can see the information here. And I don't like the texture of Manila because I'm a, a weird tactile person. And so that's like a start, right? We've got our intake sheets for buyers and sellers. I'm making those available to y'all, by the way, if you want that. So let's talk about a system that you all need right now and you need to build it. So get your pencil and paper or ink pen, whatever you wanna use. We're gonna build a system right now. We're gonna workshop, how about that? Get your money's worth out of car today. Get my piece of paper here too, so I can make sure I stay on track. And the system we're gonna build is one you already do all the time because you have all, every one of you in this call, unless you've never listed a house, you have overpriced a listing. It just happens. And I'm not thinking it was malicious. It's because markets are fluid and pricing is fluid. And you have to always say that to people because they get very married to a price. And then unfortunately, you realtors get married to it because you think that your pride is on the line if the price was wrong, but it's not. Markets are fluid and pricing is fluid which is why you generally show them your house is gonna sell ish around here, here's a range, give them a ballpark, especially in the great unknown, where we don't know the final outcome of what's gonna to happen to our markets. So we've had to reduce our prices. We're gonna build a price adjustment worksheet. Y'all ready? Here we go, okay. Now, step one, acknowledge that the price needs to be adjusted. That's your little 12 step program. We have to acknowledge it. And I'm not even joking about that, y'all. I have talked to many, many a realtor and I have the fun of coaching them. And they're like, but it had 85 showings. I know an offer's coming. Uh-huh, y'all know this. You have a lot of showings and no offers. You're this far off on price and you know it. You have to stop listening to your emotional attachment and listen to the logic. You know, you knew all along. All right, so that's step one. Step two, we're gonna call the seller. And we're not gonna text them, we're not gonna email them, we're gonna call them on the outbound call, okay? Look, it's amazing when you use your voice. Even you millennials make outbound calls. And you're gonna say, hey, hey Tom, hey, it's Lee Brown with One Community, how are you? Good, good, yes. So I'd like to set up a time when we can meet by Zoom for about 15 minutes and talk strategy. I could do it this afternoon at about 4, 15 or so, or tomorrow morning I could do you first thing at eight o'clock, does that work? You're gonna give two options, no matter how busy you are, that's standard sales 101 to get people to get into your schedule and you're not just saying, I'm available all the time, all the days. That's a terrible habit to set, so give them options. And I will point out here, this is one of those Zoom treatments that we should be using forever because for many of you, you're used to doing the price adjustment either just over the phone or at their house and that takes a lot more time than when you video conference, because when you video conference, you can share your comps on the screen, you can show the information and you can look at each other. That tends to make the conversations more fruitful than the telephone. And in person, you guys get chatty and you spend like two hours in there. So we're gonna use Zoom for this and your clients are also comfortable with it by now because they've done everything on Zoom, whether it's the Sunday school class or their work group. So they're good there. Y'all, this should be forever. The other reason I want this to be forever for you, set your recording in Zoom. And of course you can do your whole little, the phone call is being recorded for quality assurance, whatever. 
you want to record these conversations because it will make you more effective as a realtor. It will actually ensure that you're following fair housing because people behave better when they're recorded. And if the seller decides to argue with you later, which happens, you could be like, look, dude, we talked about it. I'll send you the recording back if you don't believe me. Mm -hmm. Very important stuff. So our step two was to, I forgot to change screens. There's your checklist. And yes, I spelled important wrong on there and I have not fixed that slide yet. So I'm a realtor, what can I say? So step two was to set an appointment. Step three is a new CMA. Now, why am I doing a new CMA and not an updated one? Y'all right now, I'll point out to you that this is May 21st and some of you still think it's April or March because time has moved into this weird parallel universe. If you gave them an appointment in February, which may as well have been a century ago, right? You used a different market. And now they've called you and said, hey, we saw the news from the CDC that this thing doesn't live on surfaces after all, so we're ready to sell. And you told us X before and you gotta say to them, Oh, friends, let me do an update because um, the market's changed and I don't know exactly what your number should be. So let me circle back. Same thing on any existing seller because y'all February was a different market. Your March closings were under contract before we had stay at home orders. That's a different market. April's a mixed bag. May is mostly coronavirus era closings. June and July are gonna tell us the story. Have we gone up? Have we gone a little bit sideways? Did any part of town go down? What do our days on market look like? What's our volume change? Nobody's really sure of how everything's gonna look because of the number of fall throughs that everybody has seen with contracts of people that are like, <gasps> can't do it right now, <gasps> panic, nervous, fear. And so we don't really know. And I do think that the data over the next 90 days will tell us one story and then we're gonna look six and 12 months out and see a different story because we're gonna have some definite long-term unintended consequences. But you wanna be the realtor that pulls the information together and says, because we don't know, I just don't know. I can guess, I'm always guessing, but we're gonna to have to continue to update your strategy because we don't know. All we know is that at our current price, nobody has written us an offer, which means we're somehow off somehow, some way because houses are selling. You also wanna make sure they know that you're weighting actives more heavily than ever before because in a changing market, actives are your most important factor. If your listing is owned for 400 and not selling, look at the actives. If they're starting to go to 395, 392, 387, and they're all right up under your guy, they're using your guy as a pinball to make themselves look like a better value. So he needs to see that picture. And you're like, you're still getting a lot of showings, but they're not getting any offers. They're circling up under you. So we have to think about whether or not you want this house to go right now. You gotta have these honest conversations, friends, and it's not easy and you don't have answers, right? You're providing pros and cons so that they can make a great decision. Because as a realtor, you are a professional problem solver. You are not a soothsayer. You are not somebody that's in there to boss them around. You are there to provide information and guidance. So after you produce that new CMA, step five, we're gonna have the appointment, right? Is that right? Hang on. Acknowledge, set the appointment, new CMA. No, step four is have the appointment. I always have it as a check item because I like to give myself credit that they did not duck me because you know how sellers will duck you, which is why I asked for a strategy meeting and not a price adjustment. And let me point one more thing out too. I get very, very hot under the collar with realtors that call them price improvements. You know why? Because a large portion of the public thinks that realtors are very cavalier with their money. And when you've taken somebody's house from 400 to 390, in their head, is it an improvement to lose ten thousand dollars and you're like well they didn't have it yeah i know on paper it wasn't selling but in that seller's head they just lost ten thousand dollars it's not a price improvement it's a market adjustment think about how the words that you use can impact what people think about your professionalism and how important you know that this is to them and to you all right so step four was have the appointment step five was get the seller to agree that he needs to go to 390 which means step six, we get it in writing. So VeriSign, DocuSign, DigiSign, dot loop, whatever, get a signature. Step seven, and all my brokers are gonna say, amen. Give it to your brokerage, right? So I always kind of hate it when I see one of my agents get a price adjustment and I see it in the MLS for I have proof of it. Please turn it into us. I mean, you should. And so then the next step is to update the MLS. 
and then we're going to update all our marketing and all our websites and all the stuff we're doing then we're going to call every agent in town who's ever shown it or sniffed around about it then we're going to call every suspect who's come in by facebook text email facebook message whatever and then we have step 12 and y'all step 12 is the one that you forget because your realtors who are a little bit add while you're super efficient and you're multitaskers so when you get a price adjustment approved i know that y'all sit down at the computer and you're like and you knock it all out you get on the phone you make you slide aisle and you make a thousand phone calls you've crushed it out and then you moved over here to list this one or show this one or handle this or do this or do this because you're very good at multitasking and then an offer comes in you're like oh yeah 390 work yeah yeah we got an offer whoop whoop and you call your seller and you're like hey tom got an offer that new price worked and tom says are you serious we could have waited a day you made me come down you just tell them they can pound sand i ain't coming another penny off the price because this is wrong yeah you've had that conversation haven't you it's because you forgot step 12. step 12 is call the seller and you're going to call him and say hey tom so just so you know you authorized the new price of 390 and here's what i have done in the 15 minutes since you authorized that i have updated my entire brokerage i've updated the multiple list what that means is i've updated 4,000 realtors in the marketplace and also the mls is going to change about 382 websites i've updated all my websites in marketing i have called every agent in town who has shown your house or sniffed around about it i've reached out to every suspect who's come in through any of our marketing channels and we have done a full scale press to make sure people know so i will let you know as soon as i have anything further and then friends when that offer comes in tom does not think that you forced him to negotiate against himself or that he should have waited a day he now sees that the offer could absolutely be a result of your very hard work in updating the marketplace we just forget to tell people how hard we work and how much intricacy is involved in this and so I'll tell you that as you jotted down those 12 things, some of y'all are thinking, but Lee, I do a sign writer or I do a Facebook ad. Cool. Make sure that you empty your brain out and make it yours. Because each one of us does business a little differently. That's the beauty of real estate. We're highly competitive and we're also highly personalized. And that's the coolest thing about this business. So figure it out your way and then go to Google Docs or to Microsoft Word or to Pages and go to find a checklist template and just type this over save it as a price adjustment worksheet and shazam you just took something out of your head and made life easier and i'll point something else out to you here once you get that checklist done you've got to do some more because there's a lot of intricacy to our business and with the agents that i coach my general advice is they do one a week right now because a lot of realtors are finding themselves with some excess time on their hands whether you're busy on monday and not on tuesday then busy wednesday thursday and not friday we're all in kind of weird unknown spaces so when you have an extra hour do one one system y'all saw we just built this one in like 10 minutes you can build out most of what's in your brain pretty quickly if you just do it and the place to start and i should have looked to see if car had one but on many realtor associations there is a page that has this document called things a realtor does to sell your house and if y'all will just Google Realtor Association, things a realtor does to sell your house. I know that Orlando has one in Kansas City and Pennsylvania realtors, they're all over the place. But depending on which list they're using, it could be 160 items, it could be 300 items. But I want you to take that as your leaping off point for creating all these little micro systems. And what I'll point out to you is that the, part of the reason we do price adjustment is that we all need that checklist at some point. But when I look at that list of 160 things a realtor does to sell your house, on there, one of them says price adjustment if needed. It's almost a throwaway item. But if you think about the fact that that if needed is a 12 step micro system, you'll realize that you're doing a lot of work and you're very valuable. And the public needs to know that. They often wonder why we're paid what we're paid. Well, part of it's the risk of never getting paid. And the other part of it is that we work really hard and we do a lot of detail work to protect their largest financial instrument. And it's never bad to show people that, which is part of the reason I'm an old person who uses paper and three ring binders and I don't do everything online. 
Now, of course, Tom's already mentioned this to you, but I'm glad that he brought it up. And actually, it may have been Ann that mentioned it. Financialwellness.realtor is one of our great tools for helping you develop systems, not just for the day-to-day -day operation of your business, but for your money. Realtors are notorious for spending what comes in, forgetting about taxes and marketing and needing to pay their bills and forgetting about the very unpredictable nature of commissions and the marketplace. And so you often put yourself in last place with finances, which is why so many realtors have been in a flat panic because they didn't have reserves set aside to go on stay at home orders. When realtors are told to stay home, we ain't getting paid. Your spouse might have a salary, but you don't. So how do you treat yourself differently? This was the brainchild of our 2017 president, Bill Brown from Oakland, California. And full disclosure, I was on the team that built this because I was a stockbroker before I became a realtor. So I know just enough to be dangerous, just for the record. So when you're looking at this, you're gonna go in, it's gonna give you an assessment tool. And by the way, it's anonymous. We're not tracking your nerds number on that. We just wanna know how many realtors are actually taking advantage of the tool. And then the system will spit out some suggestions for you on ways to make your financial life better, whether it's better budgeting in your business or it's investing in real estate, because many realtors don't invest in real estate because you've never done it and you're uncertain about it and thus you stay away from it. We don't want you to fail yourself in the future for fear or for lack of knowledge now. So there's a ton of really good stuff in here. The reason I screenshot this one is that you'll see that in this particular section of options, what should I know before investing in my first rental property? How does that help? Well, it helps you, the realtor, start to buying your own stuff. But it also means that when I talk to this buyer about primary residence, I'm gonna also talk to her about investment. You should have a standard policy to talk to every one of your incoming prospects and suspects about not just primary, but investment. Because in today's world, the equities markets have been slightly volatile and caused a lot of heartburn and fear. And your client base perhaps would be interested in some diversification of their assets, but they don't know how, and they don't know you can help them. So if you start telling people, I can help, you'll be surprised how many of them will be interested. There's also information on here about second homes. When you're in a university market, you're gonna get questions from parents about second homes. And I will tell y'all, if I were in a university market that weren't a suitcase college, we have UNC Charlotte here, but that's not really a normal university like UVA is a bigger university. You've got probably parents that are not gonna want their precious pumpkin to live in the dorm even when school comes back. So now would be a wonderful time to be talking about buying investment properties for your pumpkin to live in for the future. Because we know anything about parents of today, they are lawnmower parents. And this is a great opportunity for you to speak to their fears in a way that encourages them to make good financial decisions too, because I love my rental properties. So anyway, financialwellness.realtor, which means you know I'm gonna tell you about this. Y'all are killing yourselves quickly and slowly, depending on how your spending habits go, because you know all 16 digits on that credit card, you know the security code and the expiration date by heart. That's dangerous, because that's what leads to impulse purchases on Instagram, and then you buy stuff from Chinese companies that never send it to you, and then you forget that you sent them the money and you never got the stuff because you get really impulsive. If you know all the numbers on your card, call MasterCard and say, hey, I was at the Harris Teeter and I dropped my card in the produce and because of coronavirus, I ain't picking it back up. Send me a new one. They will send you a new card. It won't impact your credit score. I'm not talking about canceling accounts. I'm talking about getting a new number. And then what will happen is all of your auto pay things will start kicking out and you'll be like, oh snap, I forgot about that. I didn't know I signed up for that. That was a monthly recurring and didn't know about that. You'll start wiping it out. And then if you're smart, you'll leave that card across the kitchen and get up off your butt and walk over to get it before you're gonna make a purchase. The minute and a half it takes you to go to your pocketbook and come back could be all it takes for you to slow your impulse purchases. I can't tell y'all this enough. Realtors are very ish with their own money. And that's what causes you a lot of heartburn and fear and concern. And you've got to think in terms of being a business owner who needs reserves and who has a budget and watches your outcome and inflow like a hawk which means you need two credit cards. You need one for your business and you need one for your personal. And I'll point this out to you. One of my realtor friends, and he gave me permission to use his name. His name is David Zeitz and he's in Lumberton, North Carolina. 
I have been complaining at David for years about this and he finally listened. During April, while he was at home, he went through and eliminated over $670 in monthly charges. And he just wasn't paying attention to it because as a realtor, he's making enough money to keep paying it. And he felt sick and he's fixed it. So be smart, friends, be smart. There's nobody but you can manage that money. So now let's talk about your database for a minute because, oh, I got five minutes. Okay, I'm hurrying, Abby. Okay, database, clean it up. A lot of y'all are digital people hoarders and you're almost as bad as the people on Netflix that are living in hoarder houses. It's a mental illness, we know this. In your database, it's almost an illness because as realtors, you were trained from day one to go to an open and get somebody's name, phone number. Put them in your database, where do they get out? That's not a database that's gonna do you any good. That's just a collection of names and emails and phone numbers and they don't know you unless they're savvy enough to stalk you online and you're now creating good content. So I want you to think about your database instead of being a hoarding of as many people as possible. Who are these people? Are they mine and do I love them? I want you to think about this in terms of deepening relationships, which we all would probably say is the best outcome of the stay at home orders during coronavirus is the amount of time we've spent building relationships that had gotten neglected because of our very busy lives. So the first thing you have to do is figure out who they are. And I mean, like, who are your people? It's not 8,000 names in your database. It's not 1,000 people on Facebook. Your people will see you in the grocery store with your hair in a ponytail because you didn't have time to fix it, no makeup on, wearing yoga pants because you needed a gallon of milk and make a beeline for you anyway. They're like, oh, 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 hey, hey, oh my gosh, so glad to see you. They will never social distance. They will always hug you because they don't give two rips about rules. They give a rip about you. And it's not that many, y'all. Your circles are never as big as you thought. And there's research that tells us this. It's from a British researcher named Dunbar, because it's Dunbar's number, who has been investigating how many relationships the average human can handle. And his number is 150. It's a range of 100 to 200, but we land at 150. And I know y'all are arguing with me now and you're thinking, Lee, I can manage way more than that. And I'm gonna tell you, you can't. Because if you found out about it on Facebook, they're not your people. If you saw that their mother was in hospice, if they're your people, you know about it because you're in constant touch with them. And if you find out on Facebook, you might be in tier two or tier three, but they're not there. These are the people you do life with. And you don't just know them, they know you. And they don't think of you as a realtor, they think of you as their friend and they know you're a realtor. It's a different way to think about things because it's these people. This picture gives me so much hope because this is coming back again, right? Five friends sitting together, no devices, not even an Apple watch because the one dude with the watch, it's an analog watch. People still own those, I guess. They're making eye contact with each other. They're loving each other. And that's what your 150 will do. When you look at the 150, it's the people that you can't wait to invite over when this is done, that you can't wait to go out to supper with. And I'm going to challenge you to go ahead and set something up. Maybe it's for July 4th. You're going to have a cookout at your house. Call them today and invite them. I'm going to have a cookout. I want something positive to plan ahead to. Will you please come? They're also going to be glad to plan ahead to happier times. And if you get there and you're not ready or they're not ready, all right, punt, move it to August. But give yourself something on the other side of the pandemic that will give you hope and a good outcome because that's gonna have a major impact on your business. When you're talking to people, ask them if they want your real estate emails. If they say no, ask them what they wish you'd put in it. I will tell you, that's why I started putting my cooking videos in my newsletters calls and talking to my 150. They said, we don't, we don't care what you're listing. We want to know what the ingredients were for what you fixed for supper the other night. And when I made that change, cause I got good feedback, my open rate jacked. I mean, it's as simple as asking for feedback and it's the 150 that will tell you what you need. They're not gonna lie to you because they love you. You also wanna pay attention here to what their needs are. Do they need you to bring them supper? Do they need you to pop over and check on them? We need to lean heavily into the humanity right now because there's so many of your friends and neighbors that are lonely and fearful and just your voice on the phone could change their day. So just ask them if they need anything. 
And then if you want to make them laugh, just ask them if they know where there's toilet paper right now. People giggle about that. And if you're asking serious questions, ask them where there's good meat because that's the new supply chain getting disrupted. So with that being said, I didn't leave y'all a ton of time for questions because I'm a rambler and I think everybody already knew that. So if you have any questions, pipe them into the chat or the question block. And while I'm waiting for you to type something in over there, I'll remind you again, Ann and Tom have already told you this, but I'll tell you again, nar.realtor slash rtrn, get your ePro for free, get your at home with diversity half price. And by the way, the, the brand new at home with diversity debuted day before yesterday, we had over 1200 people take the class and it's really great content. So even if you take it in the past, take it again, it's really good. The pricing specialist is half price. Of course, commitment to excellence, which is like a three hour rabbit hole. I will just warn you, it's fascinating and fun and you'll find so many things you didn't know. I'm a realtor education junkie. I teach all the time. I thought I would cakewalk and I kept getting hamstrung and I was like, oh snap, gotta relearn. And that's really fun. And the telehealth, just so you know, you need to be signed up by May 31st. And then the ongoing, seven bucks a month. It's one of the best benefits we've ever seen. It does cover mental health, by the way, and it covers your children up to age 26. I'm very proud of our organization for the work that's been done to help you get through this very weird time. And if you want all my free shit, there's where it's located. Text the word kicktail to the number 555-888. It's the easiest realtor number I could come up with. But your iPhone's gonna try and put a space between kick and tail. And just like you, I've never tried to type the word ducking on my cell phone. And so that's why it doesn't know what, who I am. So backspace over that, you'll get all the free stuff. Or you can go to learnwithlee.com if you prefer to go that way. It is going to make you tell me who you are. But for the record, I only send realtor newsletters out when I'm feeling it. And that's very sporadic. So full disclosure. I also have a podcast called Crazy Shit in Real Estate. If anybody's wanting to appear on it and have some free marketing, it's a lot of fun. So you can check that out. But mostly, thank you for logging in today. Y'all could have been out doing lots of other things. You could make a ton of excuses for not showing up for this general membership meeting, but you did. So thank you for coming. And I hope you got a little bit of juice to take yourself in a different direction so that when we get to the other side of this, it'll be a better version of you a better version of your communities, and overall people will think of realtors in a more positive and impactful way. There's all my social handles. I respond to things myself. It is me because I believe it's social. So it might take me a hot minute, but I generally get back to you. But fair warning, I'm very political on Twitter. And so if you can't handle that, don't go to that dumpster fire because that's just not helpful. So there we go. I still don't see any questions over here. And Tom, Abby, anybody else want to pipe up? This is your big chance. Oh, there's Rachel. Thank you for monitoring for us the whole time. Your makeup looks good today. Nice job. Oh, thank you. I didn't have to actually monitor any questions so far, but I did want to say thank you. We appreciate your insight. Um, in keeping us relevant in today's market. This has been a great session. And given that we don't have any questions, I'm gonna turn things over to Tom, but thank you so much, Lee. Absolutely. Tom, we can't hear you. You're still muted, oh, Tom. There okay. we go. Now you can hear me. Well, yeah, I just wanna tell you, that was a fantastic presentation. And more so than just the fire hose of information you gave us, it was just the the attitude, the uh, emotional level, the enthusiasm, the energy behind it. it. It means a whole lot. And especially in the conditions we're all working in right now, uh, it's, yeah, just thank you. Thank you for being here and thank you for what you do. Okay, it's great It's absolutely my pleasure, we're all realtors. <laughs> yes, we are, yes, we are. Okay, uh, Rachel, you probably had one of the easiest uh, Q&A facilitations uh, we've had yet. Um, but if anyone still has questions, go ahead and pop them in the box there. Otherwise, I'm going to move on. Uh, I will tell you this, that uh, today's session recording will be available on CAR's YouTube channel. And you can reference that uh, again or share it with a colleague. Uh, send that on. This is a great message. And for those who couldn't be here, if you know someone who couldn't be, um, yeah, just pop the link over to them. So. Before we end, I'd like to acknowledge and thank you for taking the stay-at-home order and recommended CDC guidelines seriously. And I'm gonna tell you folks, this is a bit of a soapbox of mine, but we're all in this together and we have an image to uphold. And part of that, especially right now, is the safety and security and health 
of not only ourselves, but also our clients and customers and the public at large. So be aware that the nuisance, and I'm gonna call it a, a minor nuisance of having to put on gloves and wear a face mask and wipe down surfaces, it's so important because we're fortunate that here in Virginia, we can still pursue real estate. There are some states that cannot. So anyway, I'm gonna get off my soapbox now. And uh, to conclude the meeting, uh, do we have any new realtor members to be introduced today? If we do, uh, I'd like their name and brokerage to be entered into the chat box in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Uh, if we have new members, we'd like to recognize you. I'm gonna give a few seconds for that. Okay, do we have any new affiliate members? Same thing, if we have some affiliate members, uh, would you please put your name and the organization you're affiliated with in the chat box? Okay, I'm not seeing any affiliate members, that's fine. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you again for coming. Again, Lee, thanks to you for your presentation and being with us this morning. I hope everyone had a great day and got a lot out of it. And at this point, I'm going to say this meeting is adjourned. Thank you again.